Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. Hey everyone, before today's episode gets started, I just want to talk a little bit about the fight against Alzheimer's. For those of you that don't know, my family has been impacted by Alzheimer's and my wife and I are members of the Young Champions for the Minnesota North Dakota chapter of the Alzheimer's Association. The world may look a little different right now, but one thing hasn't changed. The Alzheimer's Association's commitment to ending Alzheimer's. This year, Walk 10 Alzheimer's is everywhere on every sidewalk, track, and trail. Due to COVID, this year won't be a large in-person gathering. Instead, everyone will be walking in small teams of friends and family. We are all still walking and fundraising for the same thing, a world without Alzheimer's and all other dementia. So I'm asking that if you can, please support our team for the Alzheimer's Association's Walk to End Alzheimer's. This walk is the world's largest event to raise awareness and funds for Alzheimer's care, support, and research. Thank you in advance, and you can find information and links below. And now, back to the show. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Chimera's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, on an episode yesterday, I talked about Charks, the very first legendary crab in Magic. And actually, before we go a little further than that, there were some comments yesterday about Misformultimus or Morphon being the first legendary crab. Those don't count. Come on, Shapeshifter, Changelings, they would just count for everything then, and uh, you get what I mean, okay? First legendary crab is Charks. We're just going to leave it at that and go on from here. Anyways, being the very first legendary crab, there are huge expectations because crab is such a prestigious creature type in magic, obviously. Anyways, as cool as Sharks is, could there have been a more epic legendary crab to start things off for crabs? Yes, I believe so, and I think I found it with Urius the Scuttle Lord from Arya Though, a custom magic commander. Urius the Scuttle Lord is a 1-4 crab that costs 2 blue blue and has whenever one or more players mill one or more cards for the first time each turn, create a 0-2 blue crab creature token. In each crab you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. So, there's a decent amount going on with this legendary crab and let's break it down piece by piece. The first part is actually pretty specific in what it says. It says whenever one or more players mill one or more cards for the first time each turn, that's a lot of kind of specifications to make sure that essentially, at the most, you're getting one zero two crab each turn, which if the, those were changed into a, a different wording, you could end up with a ton of crabs. If it didn't say one or more, or if it didn't say, you know, for the first time each turn, you could end up with an absurd amount of crabs. So I'm glad that that's kind of a restriction on this because again, you can still get one crab per turn. So each time around the table, you can get a zero two crab for every one of the four players. And that's, you know, four crabs. It might not seem like a lot being zero twos, but again, with that second part, your crabs are assigning combat damage equal to their toughness rather than their power. So they're going to be basically two twos, essentially. I really like the direction of Urius as a legendary crab tribal commander with a mill sub theme. It seems like a really interesting way to go about creating a crab army and taking out your opponents from there. So let's start with some cards that can fit in really well with this deck, and we're going to be starting off with Hedron Crab. Now, it's a 0-2 crab that costs a blue, and it says whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, target player puts the top three cards of the library into their graveyard. So essentially, whenever a land comes into play, you mill someone for three, and you're getting a crab. Again, that can only happen once each turn, you're only getting one crab, and that's still going to be good. Ruin Crab essentially is very similar, but whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent mills three cards. So, that's something to keep in mind. It is going to mill more, but again, you're getting the exact same number of crabs because of the way that the commander is worded. It is also to note that this is a 0-3. Hadron Crab is a 0-2, so again, because they're going to be assigning combat damage based on their toughness, that's a decent amount of value for just a one drop. Iceberg Handcrix is another one to consider if you're going to be running Snow Permanents like Snow Basics. A 0-4 for one in a blue. That says, whenever another snow permanent enters the battlefield under your control, you may have target player put the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. Again, snow basics are a bit more expensive, so in a budget kind of deck, you might not be running them. But if you're running a little outside of budget, Iceberg Cancrix can definitely be one to consider as well. And again, as a 0-4, dealing four damage for two mana is pretty good. Up next, we're going to be talking about a card that I already mentioned earlier with actually the very first technical legendary crab from Magic with Charx the Raging Isle, a 0-17 Leviathan Crab for 2 blue blue. And Charx would be a perfect fit for this deck. It does have the ability to, you know, you pay a certain amount of mana and then you can plus it and minus it based on your islands. But with a deck like this, you're not going to be doing that because this commander basically does kind of an Arcades type thing, but just for crabs. So this is basically a 17-17 for 4 mana, and spells your opponents cast the target, it costs 2 more to cast. So, good luck dealing with that. Yeah, you're just going to be able to smack, uh, hopefully, your opponents for quite a bit of damage, at least take out some of their creatures with this. Going to be a lot of fun getting Charks on the battlefield with Urius as your commander. 
Next up, let's talk about some mill cards that can work really well in this deck. Again, keep in mind the exact kind of wording where it's going to be one or more, one or more, and then also first time each turn. So basically, you just need to make sure that you can mill at least one player once during every single turn to get a crab on each of those turns. Again, four crabs each time around the table is going to be a lot. That's going to be eight total power, I mean, eight total toughness, but again, toughness equals power. So basically the same thing. Codex Shredder is going to be a great repeatable one that can be used once around each turn cycle. It can tap and target player mills one, and you can also pay five and tap and to sacrifice to return target card from your grave with your hand. So it's just a good piece of utility on top of being able to mill repetitively throughout the game. Milliken is another one to consider as well. It taps to put the top card of your library in your graveyard, and you add a colorless to your mana pool. So this is a mana dork that can help you get your commander out early. It can also help you throughout the game, and you can also mill yourself for that cram. Teferi Stoolage is another one to consider. It's an enchantment for two and a blue, and when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card, then you discard a card, and whenever you draw a card, target opponent mills two cards. So, this one is kind of at a base level, just a at least mill on your turn, basically, you know, with your draw. But it also can be, you know, a if you've got those instant speed draw spells, you can mill on your opponent's turns as well through this. There are some cards that can be a little more beneficial, though, and kind of ensure that you're going to be milling on your opponent's turns as well. Like Riddle Keeper. Riddle Keeper is a 1-4 that, co that costs 2 and a blue. It says, whenever a creature attacks you or a Planeswalker you control, that creature's controller puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. So essentially, if someone attacks you, they're going to mill for two, and you're going to get a crab. Uh, Memory Erosion is even better than this in most situations. It's an enchantment for one blue blue. It says, whenever an opponent casts a spell, that player puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. Most players are going to be casting spells during their turn. So essentially, if every single player casts a spell during their turn, on each turn, you're guaranteed that then you are getting a crab on each player's turn. Again, it might not always work out that way, but something like Worried Beads does ensure that you essentially get a crab on each turn because it's an artifact or three, and it says, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player mills one. So basically, this is a guaranteed, hey, every single turn, you get a crab. So basically, you're going to be building up your army of crabs throughout the game. Again, every single time around the table, you're getting four crabs, and that is a lot. Next up, let's talk about some cards that can actually pump your team, some utility cards like a Mizium skin. It's innocent for a blue, and it says target creature you control gets plus zero, plus one, and gains hexproof until end of turn, but it's got overload for one and a blue. So this is a great way to protect your team with all that hexproof, and also, it's just a nice little buff. Again, plus zero, plus one isn't all that great. It's a little bit better with our commander because, again, we assign toughness versus, we assign damage based on toughness versus power. So making our crabs into three threes essentially instead of two twos can be a lot of damage with the number of crabs that we're going to have in play. Other things like Slagworm Armor can come in really handy too. It's an equipment that says equipped creature gets plus zero, plus six. So yeah, basically just a plus six, plus six on an equipment that costs one and costs three to equip. We can turn one of our crabs into a heavy hitter with this. Uh, the Kind of in the opposite direction, Mation the Mind Cage is a legendary enchantment for four, blue, blue, blue. It says all creatures get minus X, minus zero, or X is the number of cards in your hand. Again, the power of our own creatures does not matter for this deck because, again, we have that kind of Arcades effect that basically our crabs deal damage based on their toughness and not their power. So even if our power goes to negative numbers, it really doesn't matter. It is going to matter for our opponents, though, where if they have, you know, a like 6-6 six, six on the board and we've got six cards in our hands, congratulate in our hand, congratulations, your creatures are now zero sixes and they're not going to do anything. So basically, this is a great way to kind of slow down our opponents Stop them from hitting us for quite a bit, and then also kind of make sure that our army is the most powerful one out there. Again, with this kind of a deck, we're going to be able to fill the board with crabs pretty quickly. We're going to be able to attack with those crabs, and getting them through is crucial with something like Tetsuko Umazawa Fugitive. It says creatures you control with power or toughness, one or less, can't be blocked. Again, our crabs are going to have zero power. So essentially, we're going to be able to get all of our army through and nothing can block them. Again, there's other ways in blue to get our army through. There's plenty of ways to make our creatures unblockable or to give them flying or whatnot. And a bunch of flying crabs is pretty funny. But yeah, again, I think that Urius is a really interesting and unique commander. Uh, a fantastic design from Arya, though. Nothing against Charks. Again, Charks is a fantastic fit for this deck. I just think that when it comes to a legendary crab, something that kind of deals with crab tribal is is fun. It, it's very It's very interesting. It's unique. It's a, it's a fun take on kind of filling the board with a bunch of tokens, you know, using kind of that Arcades effect where, you know, they may seem small, but they actually kind of hit for a little more than what you thought because, again, their toughness is basically their power as well. So if you've got those ways to increase their toughness as well, that, that's a good way to go about it too. But yeah, I really like the design of this card. I hope you do as well. So let me know in the comments below what your thoughts on Urias the Scuttle Lord is. And as always, thanks again and have a good one.